Welcome back. We're in the cellars of one of the nation's largest wineries. So what does a glass of this have to do with green power? Well, in this case, everything. Visit Fetzer Vineyards in Northern California and you'll discover it's green as far as the eye can see. And not just for the vines. Since 1998, we've been a purchaser of 100% renewable power. That's 100% clean green alternative energy all the way from the vine to the cellar, then the bottling plant, and to the shelf. We achieve that in several ways. One way is on-site generation, and the second way is through purchasing renewable power off the grid, but specifically paying and sourcing renewable power. The newest addition to Fetzer's green portfolio, power purchased from this 901 kilowatt photovoltaic system. The system you see behind me can power 80% of our bottling building, or 30% of the entire winery campus. So how many solar panels? Do you have a count? Uh, there's several thousand, 4,000 I think. Think of it this way. The clean energy used to keep this bottling plant up and running is offsetting the emissions from 80 cars. And it's also doing something else. In the long term, it not only benefits the environment, but for us, it's benefited our bottom line. After going green in 1998, at first it was a leap of faith, a leap of green faith. Fetzer quickly realized while energy prices fluctuate, it stay the same. What we've done is we've signed again a long-term contract at a known price for the power. I don't think you can understate the importance of what's going on here with alternative energy. Joel Mackauer has been dubbed the guru of green business practices. What's been exciting is that how many companies are starting to really understand the business value of being a greener company. So whereas we made the choice because it was right choice, in the end it ended up to be the right business choice. All with the help of the sun, some grapes, and the commitment to give back from whence it came. It's an honor to be a part of it and I just look forward to coming to the office every day. know how to tap into clean energy? This family's doing it and you can too. Plus, flying high on wind power. You just have to know how to harness it. And don't just toss those leftovers out with the trash. They can fuel more than just the body. It's an energy breakthrough. Next on Your Green Life. So many people might not think of alternative energy when they sit down to have a meal at their favorite restaurant. Of course, food does help fuel the body, and it might help fuel the rest of the world, too. People always look up to the chef as to bring them new ideas and new food ideas. New ideas are what executive chef Charles Thon is all about. The famed chef of the acclaimed Slanted Door restaurant is known for creating delectable Vietnamese fusion fare. But his quest for innovation doesn't end in the kitchen. The Slanted Door is a wonderful recycler and a tremendous composter. So now, after 11 years, on average, I think we probably only have about 16 to 20 percent waste. The rest either recycle or cardboard or glass or compost. Vaughn is all about sustainability. In fact, his restaurant helped pioneer one of the country's largest food scrap programs. Food scraps is a tremendous resource. Most people in this country look at it as garbage, as something to get rid of. Here in San Francisco, we view it as a resource, something that we should harvest. The program collects kitchen trimmings and leftovers from more than 2,000 restaurants, so they can be turned into energy. We're working with the University of California at Davis to take some of the food scraps and send them to a new technology called anaerobic digestion. And it is very promising. They're using food from restaurants with bones and fish and so on that's going to bring a lot of different nutrients. Uh, they have new technology to break this stuff down. So what starts here in the kitchen ends up here in these huge tanks. And that's where the magic happens. This takes agricultural residue, green waste, food waste, and makes energy out of it. At UC Davis, food scraps are going through a biodegradable process 
that turns organic waste into biogas. Biogas is a mixture of uh, methane, hydrogen gases, which can be collected and used as a fuel for energy production. Dr. Ray Hong Zhang heads up the project. Her process, called anaerobic digestion, handles more types of waste and produces faster results than other systems. It's also more efficient. We have two gas collection lines, so blue is for collecting hydrogen and the red is for collecting methane gas. What was really intriguing about Dr. Zhang's process, she went back to basics. Uh, a lot of other technologies have tried to manipulate the bacteria mechanically, alter the material going in, and just it got to be very expensive. We could take grass clippings from your bin, food waste straight from restaurants right into the tank. We don't have any kind of pre-processing to them. So therefore, we're really efficient. We use less than 10% of the energy we produce to run the whole system. The system is designed to process eight tons of waste a day, enough to power 80 homes. Plus, there's more. It also produces pure hydrogen. The benefit of that, and it's been proven, if you blend hydrogen with natural gas, you have greatly reduced emissions in your vehicle. The challenge now is to produce enough volume to make it economical for commercial use. But Dr. Zhang is confident it can be done. There's great potential to power homes, power vehicles, uh, uh, buses, uh, with the biogas we produce uh, from this technology. Definitely food for thought. Each day, average Americans threw away over a pound of food in the trash can. And let's see if we can take that material, convert it into biogas energy, and convert it into fuel. That would be a great idea. Who knew you could potentially fuel the world from what's left on your plate? Win. It's good for a lot more than just the sales, because when it comes to electricity, it could change everything. America, a place where animals graze the land and blue skies stretch for miles in each direction. Some may consider it the middle of nowhere, but there is more here than meets the eye. Each one of these turbines is powering up, well, probably more than 500 homes. 100 turbines dot the landscape at the Shiloh Wind Farm in Northern California. It's a project that produces 150 megawatts of electricity to several communities. The fuel is free. It comes right out of the, the sky. It's the wind. Shiloh's a, a great example of, of a uh, new generation of, of wind farm using the, the latest uh, wind turbines, which are large multi-megawatt um, turbines. The old turbines had the lattice towers where birds could perch. The new towers have the tubular towers where they don't. The new turbines are also you know, much more efficient. They produce more electricity. And it's not just about producing clean power, it's also about producing jobs. One of the most attractive aspects of, of renewable energy development, particularly wind energy, is the economic development aspects of it, and creating jobs, um, creating income in, in rural areas. According to the National Wind Energy Association, the Plain States have the greatest potential for wind power. No surprise there, but New York, Michigan, Wisconsin, Illinois, and California also make the top 20. There's just a, a clamor in, uh, in the entire Midwest region um, to bring more wind energy uh, online. I grew up in a rural community in the Midwest where a lot of people are leaving. And these wind farms are bringing jobs, both operational jobs, construction jobs, property tax revenues, and lease payments to these rural communities. But there are some roadblocks, namely supply just can't keep up with demand. The biggest challenge right now in, in the industry is to uh, find enough turbines to install. We do have about a, a one or two year wait for turbines for project for developers that, that are out today trying to um, develop new projects. But for the industry, it's a win-win situation all around. And it makes me feel great. We're making energy in a responsible manner, we're um, harnessing increasingly improved technologies, and we're bringing economic development to these rural areas. So how can you tap into the power of green in your home? We'll show you, coming up next on Your Green Life.